Hello and a very warm welcome to Science Monitor, your weekly update on what's happening in the field of science, technology, research and innovation. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. From the 10th National Science Film Festival of India to the cultivation of saffron in Himachal Pradesh, we have lots in store for you. But as always, let's begin with the headlines. 10th National Science Film Festival of India organized successfully from 24th to 27th November. The online festival screened 115 films exhibiting different facets of science. Online workshop conducted by IIT Kanpur to invigorate satellite gravimetry research in India. Several experts from India and abroad attended the workshop. Saffron grown in Himachal Pradesh may enter our kitchen soon. Saffron cultivation introduced in Himachal by CSIR IHBT Palampur. And in our segment Career in Science, we will explore different courses offered by reputed institutes of India to make a career in dairy technology. And now, the news in detail. Vigyan Prasar organizes National Science Film Festival of India every year to promote quality science filmmaking in the country. This year, in view of the pandemic, the 10th edition of the festival was organized online in collaboration with Tripura State Council for Science and Technology. The festival ran from November 24th to 27th and screened 115 films depicting different facets of science. Films are a powerful medium of communication and looking at the impact of this medium on society, Vigyan Prasad, an autonomous organization of the Department of Science and Technology, launched the Rashtriya Vigyan Chalachitra Mela in 2011, which has now become the National Science Film Festival of India or NSFFI. With an aim to promote science films, this festival has been organized at different locations in the country. The 10th edition of the festival was originally planned at Agartala in Tripura. But due to the COVID crisis, the event was organized on a virtual platform in collaboration with Tripura State Council for Science and Technology. The festival was inaugurated on 24th November and concluded on 27th November. National Science Film Festival is a flagship program of Vigyan Prasar. This program was conceived 10 years back and this is the 10th National Science Film Festival. Initially, this program was known as Rashtriya Vigyan Chal Chetra Mela. But four years back, we have changed the name to National Science Film Festival of India. Due to the pandemic, this is the first time we are organized this program on virtual platform. As a result of this, the event has become a global event. NSFFI is India's first of its kind film festival where science related documentaries and short films are screened and awarded under different categories. The 10th edition received 372 films produced by government organizations, non government organizations, filmmakers, and students. And out of these, 115 films were selected under various categories for screening in the festival. In addition to the screening of films based on different themes such as energy, environment, water management, health and agriculture, several master classes and panel discussions were also organized to discuss filmmaking techniques and subjects of science films. In films, we understand our filmmakers science. They search for science in nature, they search for science in the sea, they search for science in the sea, they search for science in the sea, they search for pollution, how to reduce climate change, 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 how to redu
उस पर कुछ साइंटिफिक मैसेज देने का प्रयास करते हैं ताकि आम व्यक्ति की सोच में बदलाव आए और जो जब हमारी सोच बदलेगी तो हमारा दृष्टिकोण और हमारा बर्ताव या हमारा बिहेवियर भी बदलेगा और हमारे जो निर्णय लेने की क्षमता है हमारी जो डिसीजन मेकिंग है वो हमारी वैज्ञानिक सोच पर आधारित होगी तो ये एक छोटा सा उद्देश्य है इस फेस्टिवल का The 10 member jury of NSFFI 2020 included noted filmmakers Girish Kasarwalli, Abhijit Das Gupta, media academic Shambhunath Singh and additional director general of Doordarshan Anil Kumar Srivastava. This time Chalti ka naam Ushma. The climate challenge and croaking frogs won the Golden Beaver award in the main categories of the festival. Many technical and non-technical awards were also given under other categories. ये साइंस फिल्म का एक महोत्सव है जिसके अंदर हमें बहुत सारी प्रविष्टियाँ मिली जिसमें हमें बहुत सारे लोग मिले जिन्होंने अपनी अपनी प्रविष्टियाँ भेजी और उन सब का चयन हुआ ये एक ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म है जहाँ हम साइंस फिल्म मेकरस को एक बढ़ावा देते हैं कि वह आगे आएँ और साइंस जैसे रूखे सूखे समझे जाने वाले सब्जेक्ट को रोचक और बहुत आसानी से समझने योग्य बना सकें ताकि आम आदमी इससे जुड़ सके और उनके अंदर एक सामा एक वैज्ञानिक चेतना जागृत हो सके तो इसे ही तो कहते हैं वैज्ञानिकों की समाज के प्रति जिम्मेदारी साइंटिफिक सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी विद ईच पासिंग दिस इंडेवर ऑफ विज्ञान प्रसार इज बिकमिंग मोर पॉपुलर The festival not only appreciates and awards outstanding films but also provides an opportunity to the students to learn filmmaking for effective science communication. Accurate mapping of Earth's gravity can reveal a lot about the changes in the Earth's system. Therefore, special satellites have also been launched for measuring and mapping Earth's gravity. Now, space agencies of different countries are planning to launch next-gen satellite gravimetry missions to improve the current capabilities. In this context, an international online workshop titled "The Present and Future of Satellite Gravimetry" was conducted at IIT Kanpur under the aegis of the National Center of Geodesy to invigorate satellite. gravimetry research in india so that india can also contribute in this global endeavor gaining information about the changes coming in the natural reserves of the earth and in its atmosphere is important to sustain life on earth and gravity can help us in a big way to determine these changes as we know the gravity of an object changes with alterations in mass Therefore, the variations of Earth's gravity field tells us a lot about the mass changes within and on the surface of the Earth. In the year 2002, Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment (GRACE) satellite mission was launched by NASA in collaboration with Germany for satellite gravimetry, and its follow-up was launched in 2018. These missions have helped the scientists to measure the total water storage available on land, the amount of ice mass lost to the oceans, etc., and have also contributed to climate change studies. We also use gravity measurements to understand the Earth system, and uh, of late there have been a lot of uh, Earth observation satellites, and some Earth observation satellites they also measure. gravity and in 2002 uh, gravity field recovery and climate experiment satellite was launched which actually uh, detects these temporal variations in gravity and we have been able to understand uh, the earth far better than we used to know before the launch of grace to widen the applications and capabilities of satellite gravimetry The space agencies of different countries are now planning to launch next-gen satellite gravimetry missions. Therefore, to invigorate satellite gravimetry research in India 
an online workshop titled The Present and Future of Satellite Gravimetry was conducted at IIT Kanpur where researchers at the forefront of satellite gravimetry research ISRO, IITs and NITs were invited and experts from Germany, Netherlands, USA, Australia, Denmark and Iran also participated. The experts discussed the synergies and collaborations for developing future Indian satellite gravimetry missions. Now India is having a long legacy and it's about the right time to jump into this uh, uh, measuring the gravity as well. So we would like to have uh, ISRO doing some satellite gravimetry missions. So we thought of uh, organizing a workshop, uh, a three-day workshop where the first two days were about telling the Indian community what is the state of the art and also telling the global community what India is capable of. And in the third day we had a long discussion on how to go about uh, developing or contributing to the uh, global endeavor of uh, developing a satellite gravity mission. Given the long-standing expertise and contribution of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, to Earth's observation, India is well placed to join the endeavor. ISRO has the capability to lead the other countries by pursuing dedicated research in the design, development and applications of satellite gravimetry to tackle current and emerging challenges. Now it's time for a short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Science Monitor. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, to increase the production of saffron in the country, several new places were identified by CSIR IHBT to grow saffron apart from Jammu and Kashmir. In the last few years, the institute has conducted successful research trials of saffron cultivation in Himachal Pradesh, along with developing good quality combs or bulbs for its propagation. After successful Consecutive trials, the institute has now introduced saffron cultivation for the farmers in the selected regions of Himachal Pradesh. Here's a detailed report. Saffron is considered the most expensive spice in the world. And therefore, it is also called red gold. The aroma and color of this spice can make any dish special. In Indian culture, apart from culinary and medicinal use, saffron is also used in religious rituals. Annually, about 100 tons of saffron is consumed in India, whereas only 9 to 10 tons of saffron is produced in Jammu's Kishtwar and Kashmir's Pampor. To meet the domestic demand, the rest of the saffron is imported from countries like Iran. To increase the production of saffron in the country, several efforts were started by Palampur-based CSIR, Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology. The institute not only identified several new places suitable enough to grow saffron, but also conducted successful trials of saffron cultivation in identified areas of Himachal Pradesh. Through niche modeling, we identified which are the possible areas where saffron could be grown. Then we actually conducted experiment in those areas. Those were in Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and also in Tamil Nadu, in places like Uti, etc. So we conducted several years experiment. We also realized one of the major limitation for saffron growing and that was the bulb production. We need to have disease free combs for the saffron. So in our lab through tissue culture followed by in farmer's field, we standardized technology for calm production of the saffron. The scientific name of zafran or saffron is crocus sativus and it grows in dry temperate zones at high altitudes. The dried red colored stigma of its flower is used as a spice. It is propagated by corm which looks a lot like onion bulb. The quality of the crop depends heavily on this corm or bulb. 
scientists at IHBT have successfully developed good quality combs using tissue culture in their lab to grow saffron in Himachal Pradesh. The institute has prepared demonstration plots of saffron using combs developed by the institute. The quality of saffron is determined by the length and the weight of its stigma. The saffron cultivated by IHBT was found to match the Kashmiri saffron in both the parameters. We have prepared the corn through the corn. We have prepared the corn in the field and the corn in the field. We have given the corn in the field and the corn in the field. We have given the corn in the field. We have given the corn in the field. We have given the corn in the field. शिमला और कुल्लू जिलों में इसकी खेती किसानों के खेतों में हम कर रहे हैं। IHBT earlier collaborated with Department of Agriculture of the state to provide training to the farmers and now saffron cultivation has been started in many areas of the state, including the Jhanjeli Valley of Mandi. As of now, only some hectares of land is being used for saffron cultivation, but the institute plans to expand the effort to about 3,000 hectares in the next five years. इस वर्ष हमने एक हमें दोनों संस्थानों एक एमओयू साइन किया है मेमोरेंट ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग उसके तहत जो इसका टेक्निकल एक्सपर्टिज्म है साइंटिफिक टेक्नोलॉजी है वो हमारे सीएसआर आई संस्थान जो दे रहा है और जो हमारा किसानों को मैनेजरल और फाइनेंशियल हेल्प जो कृषि विभाग ही माचरों देश सरकार दे रही है IHBT is making a number of efforts to take the advantages of technology to the farmers by introducing cultivation of high-value crops in the region. Success of these efforts will not only improve the financial returns of the farmers but also add a new chapter in the Indian economy. Well, India has been excelling in the production of milk and milk-based products for many years. And the advances in dairy technology have played a key role in achieving this success. Therefore, there is always a demand for qualified and skilled manpower in the country to cater to the various aspects of dairy technology. Let's see what are the courses offered by various institutes in our country to make a career in dairy technology. Owing to our agricultural economy, animal husbandry has always been an important part of our culture. Now this practice has evolved into a large and organized dairy sector in the country. The rapid expansion of dairy industry has also created a huge demand for qualified and skilled professionals who can work in areas like breed development, animal husbandry and processing of milk and milk-based products. Therefore, to make a career in this field, one can take admission in graduate and postgraduate professional courses offered by many reputed institutes of the country. Like, after passing 12th standard with science subjects from a recognized school, one can pursue Bachelor of Technology in Dairy Technology, which is usually a four-year undergraduate course covering agriculture-centric as well as other topics such as Dairy Biotechnology, Food and Industrial Biotechnology, Dairy Equipment Design, Milk Production Management, Packaging of Dairy Products, etc. After doing B.Tech in dairy-related subjects and clearing GATE, one can opt for M.Tech for further specialization, like M.Tech in Dairy Chemistry, which is a two-year postgraduate course that trains in all aspects of dairy chemistry, and M.Tech in Dairy Microbiology, which is also a two-year postgraduate course to train the candidates in all the aspects of milk production and animal welfare. Alternatively, one can also do BSc in Dairy Technology and then do MSc courses related to dairy industry like MSc in Dairy Microbiology, MSc in Dairy Science, MSc in Dairy Technology and MSc in Dairy Engineering. Reputed institutes offering undergraduate and postgraduate degree courses are National Dairy Research Institute, Karnal, Haryana, Anand Agricultural University, Anand, Gujarat, 
चंद्रशेखर आजाद यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी कानपुर उत्तर प्रदेश कॉलेज ऑफ डेयरी टेक्नोलॉजी वारुड महाराष्ट्र गुरु अंगद देव वेटरनरी एंड एनिमल साइंसेज यूनिवर्सिटी लुधियाना पंजाब कर्नाटका वेटरनरी एनिमल एंड फिशरीज साइंसेज यूनिवर्सिटी बीदर कर्नाटका केरला वेटरनरी एंड एनिमल साइंसेज यूनिवर्सिटी थिरुवनंतपुरम केरला श्री वेंकटेश्वर वेटरनरी यूनिवर्सिटी तिरुपति आंध्र प्रदेश गंगा कावेरी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एंड मैनेजमेंट बेंगलुरु महाराणा प्रताप एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी उदयपुर राजस्थान संजय गांधी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डेयरी साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पटना बिहार श्री फयाज हुसैन पीजी कॉलेज ऑफ साइंस एग्रीकल्चर एंड फॉरेस्ट्री एटा उत्तर प्रदेश सैम हिगिन बॉटम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल टेक्नोलॉजी एंड साइंसेज अलाहाबाद प्रयागराज उत्तर प्रदेश एंड वेस्ट बंगाल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एनिमल एंड फिशरी साइंसेज कोलकाता many institutes also offer postgraduate diplomas in dairy technology which can be pursued after completing graduation in science one can apply in government organizations industries private ventures research institutes educational institutes after receiving the degree and meeting other requirements of the employers employment opportunities exist in indian as well as in global dairy sector But well, it's time for another short break on the program but don't go anywhere we'll be right back. Welcome back you're watching Science Monitor on Rajya Sabha Television and now let's have a look at some other developments that have made news in the field of science and technology in our segment Science Express. Scientists at the SN Bose National Center for Basic Sciences SNBN CBS An autonomous institute under the Department of Science and Technology DST Government of India have established empirical relationships for identifying M dwarf stars that can be potentially habitable. M dwarfs are the smallest stars and have a mass of about 8 to 50% of the sun's mass. More than 70% of the stars in our galaxy are M dwarfs. Determining the stellar parameters in M dwarf stars has been a challenging task since these M dwarfs are smaller, cooler and fainter than sun-like stars. Researchers studied a total of 53 M dwarf stars with the help of instruments at the Hanley based 2 meter Himalayan Chandra telescope to arrive at the new empirical relationships. Dr Sandeep Iswarappa of the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore who was recently selected for the Swarn Jayanti fellowship has proposed a new strategy to treat genetic disorders like thalassemia hemophilia and duchenne muscular dystrophy duchenne muscular dystrophy is a severe type of muscular weakness that usually begins at a young age and worsens quickly Dr Iswarappa along with his team is preparing a strategy to treat the disease through genetic control. This strategy has been successful in the case of thalassemia and work is being done on other disease models. The research has been published in the journal Biochemistry. India will soon launch a futuristic and game-changing deep ocean mission. This information was shared by Dr M Rajivan Secretary Ministry of Earth Sciences. The ambitious mission will explore minerals, energy and marine diversity for which required approvals are being obtained. ISRO and the Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO will build key technologies for this mission. Expected to cost over rupees 4000 crore, the mission will give a boost to the efforts to explore India's vast exclusive economic zone. At present, only countries like China, Korea and Germany are active in such expeditions. Soon the chirping sounds of the crickets will be used to monitor the diversity of the species. 
Currently, only morphological features are used to identify different cricket species, which presents many challenges. To overcome this, Dr. Ranjana Jaiswara, a DST Inspire Faculty Fellow at the Department of Zoology, Punjab University, is working to establish a field cricket's acoustic signal library, which can be used as a non-invasive tool to estimate the diversity of the species and also for the purpose of species monitoring. The digital library will be accessed through mobile phone application. Dr. Jaiswara's research addresses the problem of cryptic species by using advanced tools in an integrative frame. The research has been published in the Journal of Zoological Systematics and Evolutionary Research. Well, that's all we have in today's edition of Science Monitor, but do share your views about the program. You can send us your feedback and suggestions through email at our ID news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write to us at vigyanprasar, 5th floor, Prithvi Bhavan, Lodi Road, New Delhi, 11003. That's it from me. See you again next time.